All right, thank you all. We're gonna um, go ahead and get started kind of slowly. Uh, my name is J.M. Redmond. I write mystery set in New Orleans. And the panel today is we're talking about our writing process. And you know, how do the books get made, the sort of uh, nuts and bolts of everything? I have a very great uh, group of panelists with, with us today. And I don't like reading bios because I figure if you're doing a panel with a bunch of readers, they can read the bios. So I like to introduce Carrie, uh, the authors um, a little bit more personally. And we're gonna do a quick lightning round. And I want the authors just to tell me about who you are as a writer in about 25 words or, or less. So uh, Jesse, is it Jesse or Jess? Jesse. Jesse, okay, Jesse, would you start? Sure. I'm Jesse Tama. Um, I write a little bit of everything. I've shunned the idea of picking a genre because I'm, I don't know, I just can't commit. So I write contemporary romance, um, action. I've got a superhero um, book. And so you can kind of find a little bit of everything. I haven't done a spec fic outside of um, the superhero yet. So maybe I'll try that at some point. Um, yeah, I've got 10 books um, from Bold Strokes. Um, my 10th is about to come out in February. Yeah. Thanks, Sandra. Hi, I'm Sandra Barrett, and I do write specular fiction. That's kind of where my concentration is. Um, I have three novellas, um, vampire novellas, uh, with both strokes, the Jade Murphy Diaries. They're best described as sarcastic vampire in working class setting. Um, my mo most recent book is... Um, paranormal romance where necromancy is both real accepted and highly regulated um and it does have a romance involved but not with a dead person mm -hmm. okay dina uh, i'm Nina blake i write contemporary romance mostly a lot of angst in my books and i'm 13 out currently and i'm working on my 14th okay thank you and angie Hi, I'm Angie Williams. Um, I'm kind of a mixed bag also, um, but mostly contemporary romance, um, all uh, butch femme romances. Um, the one I actually just got my edits back from last night is my fifth, and it's a historical um, romance with a, a trans character. Um, so that was my first with a trans character, my first, well, and it, you know, it's set like just post-Civil War. So, uh, you know, that wasn't really a, a thing at that point, but this character f uh, fought in the Civil War as a man and um, basically identifies as trans just without that term. But um, anyway, so that's my first historical fiction that comes out in May. Um, and so I'm excited about that. Okay. And um, Alicia, so you joined us. Oh, Elena, yes, sorry, I had oh, two legs. I, I was watching, but I couldn't get in the right way. Ah. Do That's you want okay. me to go or I don't want to? Um, sure, we're, we're doing a quick little introduction where it's um, talk about who you are as a writer, you know, like 25 words or less. Oh, 25 words or less. Um, I'm Elena oh. Ardell, I write yeah, contemporary yeah. romances and I've been with Bold Stroke since 2022. Okay. Um, and the first question I had is, is again, I, I want the right audience to know about who you are. So um, if you have a uh, your latest book and you can show it um, and tell about it. And I also want you to shamelessly brag about anything. You've got any good reviews. Have you gotten any good awards? You know, that way you don't have to feel like you're being shameless because I'm demanding you do it. And of course, moderators can always make every panelist do exactly what they want. Right. Um, okay. Let's start with, um, uh, we'll go back to, to Jesse. Okay. So my upcoming release in February is Guide Us Home. Um, and I co-wrote it with C.F. Frizzell. Um, so half of it is contemporary romance. Half of it is historical romance. Um, it was an amazing experience to co-write. I hope that we get to do another one um, soon. And I hope you really enjoy it. Uh, I also have a collection of novellas. I'm one of the three. Um, Elaine is actually one of them as well. Um, Hot Hires, which is coming out in June, I believe. Um, really looking forward to that. And um, awards. I'd have been nominated for a few uh, different ones. Um, my 
most popular and I think maybe the one that I'm uh series that I'm most proud of are the Serenity Prayer series that I wrote. They're all standalone, but they're based on different aspects of the Serenity Prayer. So there's Serenity, Courage, and Wisdom. So definitely check those out. Okay, hey, thank you. Elena. My latest book is All Things Beautiful, and it came out this week. And it's yeah. a romance between a famous art teacher and a gifted student in New York. It's a forbidden romance. It has uh, bisexual leads, single moms, found families. And the early reviews have been really nice and I've been pleased. And um, if you've read it and you have a minute to take, a, uh, if you have a minute to write a review or uh, leave a rating, I'd really appreciate it. Okay, Sandra. Uh, so my latest is Grave Consequences. This is the necromancy romance one that doesn't involve romance with the dead. I feel like I keep having to say that because it's a strange combination. Um, so it's... Um, in terms of books that I'm proud of, I mean, obviously this one I, I really enjoy just because the subject matter was, I mean, I, I could just create what I want, which is what I like out of speculative fiction. I can just make it up. Um, but I'm also very proud of the novellas. It was a lot of fun to write because it's different. Um, they're very quick. Um, if you're not familiar with novellas, they tend to be maybe a third or a quarter of the size of an actual book. So just like it's like two hour movie in book format and the three novellas kind of linked together in a romance arc, but each one is its own separate, separate episode, so to speak. So that was a whole lot of fun. Okay, hey, Dina. <laughs> uh, mute, mute. That's just because I wanted longer time. It's on the details. It's an enemies to lovers uh, about a makeup artist and a, a wedding planner that are always at odds and they have to work together to handle a wedding of a friend of one of them. Um, I really like this because it was kind of fun to write. A um, little humor in it as well. Um, for uh, things that I've done that I'm really, really proud of, I, I had uh, Country Girl's Heart, which was nominated for a Goldie. Um, that's like one of my favorite books that I wrote as well. So, and my debut book was a, a Rainbow Award uh, winner as well. So, and Angie. Um, I uh, my most recent is the only fish in the sea, um, and it's kind of a um, a modern day Romeo and Juliet about a, a crab fisherman. Um, and the daughter of the rival crab fishing family um, fall in love. And of course, that's kind of forbidden love. Um, but they work it out and uh, there's lots of kissing and, and sex and love. So <laughs> it's all good. Um, and probably my favorite was my one from last year, uh, Love Another Rare Birds. Um which uh, is set in Alaska. It's a an ornithologist goes to Alaska to search for a bird that has been thought to be extinct since the since the nineteen sixties, um, and she's put together with a ranger, and they live off grid in a cabin in Alaska for three months together, um, searching for this bird, and you know close proximity. You know what that does. Um, and so that one was nominated for a, um, a Goldie last year. All right, great, thank you all. Um, those are pretty impressive credentials. Uh, one of the first questions I wanted to talk about is what do you do before you write the book? And by that, I mean, uh, you know, people often think that writing is like doing the essay in, in high school where you put it off to the last minute and then you sit in front of the computer or whatever and you just have to suddenly bang out words. And I don't think most writers work that way. I think most writers think about books before they write books. So I wanted to just talk to you about what do you do to do they get you ready to get to the point that you can write the book? Um, Let's start with Angie. We'll go back to you. Sorry, you muted yourself, and then I made you unmute you. That's okay. <laughs> um, you know, I think each each book is different. Sometimes I'll think of characters that um, I you know some sometimes I'll think of characters and I want to make a story around those characters. Sometimes I'll um read an article. So like for Love and Other Rare Birds, um, I read an article 
um, actually about this bear. These people had been rafting down a river and this bear was in a tent, like messing up this tent. And um, and they was, were going to stop and see if, you know, um, if they could see if there was somebody in danger that needed help. And this is like for real. This is a real article. And the bear saw them and chased them away. And it had turned out that the bear had just eaten somebody in the tent. And mm. so that has nothing to do with the book that I wrote. But <laughs> that kind of triggered me down like, oh, I want to write, you know, and I was thinking I was going to write something like that. Um, but then it just kind of morphed into um, I just want to put these characters in that environment. I lived in Alaska for four years and um, and I just kind of wanted to revisit that environment. And, um, you know, when you write, you get to live someone else's life in a way for a little bit. And um, and and then, but then sometimes um like just when I was driving home um, this morning, I thought of, um, oh, you know, maybe a book about a World War II pilot who um, is a woman, but it's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Like in this world that I'm creating, it's not strange that this World War II pilot would be a woman. It's just like anything else, because in that world that I create, you know, that's the great thing about creating your own stories. Uh, it, it could be as normal or whatever as you want it to be. Well, actually, a lot of women flew the planes to where they needed to go. Yeah, so but they, I was thinking just like, a you know, because um, they wouldn't let them be in battle. No, they you know, like They would fly um, supplies, but they wouldn't let them actually be fighter pilots. And I was thinking, oh, well, that's kind of BS. Like, it'd be fun to just have a, a mm -hmm. woman pilot who got to be a fighter pilot okay um dina what do you do before you start writing so um i try to outline it kind of a rough outline um not really great at outlining i used to just be a pantser you know and mm -hmm. um now i'm trying to you know put some structure to what i write um a lot of times that does involve some research for the character professions um, like Angie, it depends on the book I'm writing, how much knowledge I have on it in the first place. Um, but I do do I do take a lot of notes. Like I'll be driving to work and I'm listening to music, and um, Siri gets a lot of a lot of work out with me. I just scream at Siri and take a note, Siri, and I'll just throw a note in there uh, for later. I used to to write on my console, you know, in traffic, that's not always the best thing to do. So now I let Siri do the work. Um, but until I get, um, I don't write in order. So I kind of write scenes as I think of them. Um, so that's kind of, it's not very structured, but it works for me, so. Okay, um, Sandra. So I kind of, because a lot of my stuff is speculative in nature, I usually start out with the, the germ of an idea. You know, like the what if, you know, what if necromancy was real and, you know, when would it be used? When would people, you know, in the U.S. say, okay, that's a legal use of it. Um, but then I go with the characters. I need to know who my characters are before I really get into the plot. Um, so in this book, one of the main characters is Maddie. And I decided at the beginning she was going to have disabilities um, because that was important to the story and to the character that I wanted to present. Uh, and then after I get to the point, sometimes I will write little scenes that have nothing, you know, that, that may never show up in the book, but just to get the feel of the character, who she is, what she's gonna say, what she's gonna think. When I start writing is when she comes to life, really. Um, from there, at that point, I, I plot myself into a stupor. Um, I use this tool called Scrivener and every scene has got a paragraph written on it before I actually write it out. Um, so it's, yeah. Don't always follow the plot, but it's all plotted out before I do the real writing. Yeah, Scrivener is an awesome tool. I use that as well. Yeah. Oh, yes, definitely. All right. Uh, okay, some product placement. Maybe they should help sponsor us and pay for this. Um, okay, um, Elena, what do you do before you write a book? I probably spend more time thinking about a book than I actually do writing it. Um, 
I take a lot of notes on my phone, especially if it's something that I think of, you know, as I'm falling asleep is I won't remember it in the morning. And some of my better ideas or better lines probably come that way. But um, yeah, I think about it for a very long time and I, you know, write an outline. Obviously at some point I turn in a proposal and get it either accepted or, you know, asked to keep it. And once that's good to go, then I create a pretty detailed outline. I also use Scrivener and each one of my chapters or scenes will have a paragraph or two or three badly written, hardly punctuated, but just the ideas there um, before I even start writing. And um, I do some of the research beforehand too. Uh, it depends on, depends on, you know, where the story came from and what I know, I know um, a couple of mine came from fan fiction. Um, my second book, I wanted to write about a chef and um, I used to do that as a career. So um, I didn't have to do as much research for that, but I still did some research and I do most of it, try to do most of it beforehand, but there's always research you have to do um, as you're writing. Okay, and Jesse. I, it kind of depends on the book, I would say. Um, I definitely, have gotten more uh, focused and organized as I've progressed through sort of my writing career. Um, but I, I do a lot of time, a lot of, a lot of time spent thinking. Um, sometimes my wife is like, I thought you were supposed to be writing as I'm staring out the window. And I'm like, I am, I'm just working through it. Um, and so some books I find come really easily and I have the character, I have the plot, it just, they're there and they just pop up and then I can barely keep up with my own thoughts to get the book written. And sometimes I have the idea or I have the characters and it really takes a little bit more tugging and pulling and, and outlining and note taking. Um, as far as research, I think it depends a lot on what I'm writing. Um, I, I think everything requires some amount of research, even, um, you know, the superhero one where I could do whatever I wanted, but there are still kind of rules and things that folks expect with um, any kind of genre. So making sure that you're following those is important. And also depending, um, as someone else said, if the career, um, some some careers I have to research more, figure out what kind of personality type or et cetera that I'm doing. So research is definitely a big part of it. Okay, actually that uh, that's a great segue into my um, next question, which is, you know, what kind of research do you do? Um, and, and how do you do research? Is it um, you know, online, you know, what are the various tools you use to do the research? Uh, so Jesse, we, we could go back to you. Uh, yeah, so I, I do a lot of online research. Um, if I happen to know somebody who is in that career or something, then I pepper them with questions. Um, my book, Courage, uh, one of the characters is a mental health clinician who rides along with the police department. So she and a police officer are matched and they ride together. And then anytime there's a call that is should be handled maybe more in a, in a behavioral health setting as opposed to a criminal justice setting, they go there and then they team up to make sure that the person gets where they need to go and that the situation is de-escalated. And for that, actually, there where I work, there is a program like that. And so I was able to get sort of more of the research, a little bit more hands-on um, because it's a program that, you know, my company is proud of. And so there's a lot more information about it. And then the more research I did, the more I realized there are other programs around the country um, that are similar and, and finding the similarities and differences was really interesting and kind of figuring out where I wanted mine to fit in. Um, sometimes I'll look at locations on Google Maps and sort of drop myself into a neighborhood to get a sense of how I walk along the streets, what it looks like. If there's something that, you know, I should pull up um, and really, you know, highlight. So I think the research, it does depend a, a little bit, but a lot of it's done online. Okay. Um, Elena. Yeah, like I said, I do um, research kind of before, during, even in edits if necessary. Um, most of it's online, but I've also asked people in certain fields for help. I read books on people that people have written, you know based on um, what kind of career my my main character might have. Um, I asked a BSB author who plans weddings for a sample run of show for a novella that Jesse had mentioned earlier. Um, I've asked medical professionals um, for advice on injuries and medical scenes because that kind of thing is very specific and I definitely want to get it right. And I don't have that knowledge myself. So I, yeah, I yeah, use all sorts of research. Hey, Sandra, what about you? Um, pretty similar to what others have said. A lot of my stuff 
starts on Google, uh, you know, searching for whether it's the character's profession or some aspect of the story or um, a lot of the stuff I do, I investigate the location. And if it's not a place where I live, I will go and open up Google Maps or Google Earth and just see what does this place look like. Google Earth is great because you can get like an overview and whatnot, and then you can get street views on some things that will just spark some some ideas of how it, how everything looks. Um, the other thing that Jesse mentioned when you're doing speculative work, uh, you you do get to create everything, but it does have to have a coherence. So you do spend a lot of time trying to make sure whatever uh, paranormal element is involved has something. Um, like especially the, the novellas that I wrote before this, the Jade Murphy Diaries, uh, she, the main character is a vampire. So there's obviously an awful lot of vampire lore out there and you go and investigate it and see where do you want it to be the same? Where do you want it to be different? Um, so for example, in that particular set of novellas, um, unlike the rich, suave, um, elegant vampires you see in a lot of stories, she, you know, works in an Amazon warehouse. I shouldn't say that. She works in a warehouse. I didn't specify where. Um, and also, you know, something I decided early on was different is that, you know, she's she, she can go out in the light and the sunlight. It just makes her very sick. So there's it, different things that you decide to pick and choose when you're doing something in the paranormal that's been done before. You investigate what's out there, decide what you want and what you like and what you want to put your own spin on. Okay, Dina. So a lot of mine is that online. It's amazing what you can find find out there in blog posts. I know quite the, for perfect timing. I found a, a medical intern blog that was really really interesting that I read through. Got a lot of knowledge from that. Um, it's all in the details. This last book, um, my daughter in law actually does makeup for at weddings as her side job, so she gave me a lot of input on that. Um, Country Girl's Heart, my brother rode horses a lot, did a lot of uh, roping and things like that. So I got a lot of that information from him. But if it's something that I don't have around me or don't know anybody really in that field, I don't reach out to strangers. I do a lot of online research. Okay, and Angie. Um, yeah, uh, you know, depends on the book, like a lot of Google searching. Uh, I was in the Coast Guard um, in Alaska. So for, um, the, my last one, the last fish in the sea, the only fish in the sea, um, I, I kind of am pretty familiar with, um, crab fishing and, you know, those are the guys that we plucked out of the, <laughs> the water a lot or, or our helicopter would go, uh, you know, and rescue them off of their boats when they would, uh, be injured. Um, and I've watched a lot of Deadliest Catch. Um, so that's been years, years of research in the making there. Um, and then uh, Love and Other Rare Birds, I um, I watched because they're living off grid. And I've never really hunted or, or anything like that. Um, but in the show alone, um, where they just kind of leave these people in the middle of nowhere and they have to trap their own food and and all of that so i got a lot of knowledge uh from that um with trapping and uh and stuff like that uh, and then i'm a complete uh, history nerd so my my uh, most recent novel that's coming out in may that's um that's a uh, historical fiction um i um i i love love history and i wanted to know I, my family's from New Mexico, and I was curious if there was any Civil War stuff in New Mexico. It turns out it played a huge part in the beginning of the Civil War, and things could have turned out very differently um, had just the New Mexican people um, not risen up and joined the very few Union soldiers that were there and fought against the Confederate Army um, and stopped them from having a supply route to California, which you know, ultimately the supply route uh, is what was the downfall of the Confederate Army. So it could have turned out very differently. So um, anyways, that was super fun to research all of that. 
Okay. Um, there was a question in the uh, questions about how do you find these experts? And what I heard was a lot of Google, um, uh, Googling, looking online, um, uh, family members, friends, and that sort of stuff. Is there anything else anyone would like to add about how you find uh, the experts or, or find where to do the research? I, uh, in, in my one about the crab fishermen, it's set in Oregon. Uh, and so I wasn't sure, for instance, I wasn't sure what they... Um, cause you know, crabbing season isn't all year long. And so they have to supplement that, um, you know, their, um, income. Uh, and so I contacted Oregon fish and game and, uh, talked to a lady who was very confused about what I was saying. <laughs> I was like, I'm writing a romance. And one of the characters is, you know, a captain of a crab bridge. And she's just like, uh, okay. Like, why are you calling me? Um, but uh, yeah, so anyways, she talked to me about what they would fish when it's off season, uh, mm -hmm. when it's not crabbing season. So, you know, you sometimes you have to just kind of cold call um, professionals. Yeah, and librarians, libraries and, and mm -hmm. archivists and, and librarians love to help you. That's a good, I've never thought about that. All right, um, moving on to my next question, and it's about space. What kind of space do you work in? What kind of space do you need to write in? Do you head to the coffee shop? Do you have a nice little office? Um, feel free to, um, you know, use your cameras to, to describe it if you want to. You know, quick little walk through. Um, Jesse, we're going back to you. I write kind of wherever I can honestly I have uh three little kids and so their toys and stuff is all over the house and our house isn't that big so finding a quiet space when they're awake is pretty much impossible um but sometimes when I'm waiting uh outside Girl Scouts or you know art class or something I, I have my laptop with me and that's a great time where I'm in the car or I'm in a little corner of a room and nobody's asking for snacks or to take them to the bathroom or whatever and so I can I can write some then. Um, I'd say the place that I probably write the most is up in my wife and my bedroom, um, just because it's like the only space in the house that feels like ours. Um, and I can usually get a little bit of peace and quiet. Okay. Um, Elena. I write here at my desk. Um, okay. I have a little office on my landing um, in my home. And... Uh, it's nice. It has natural light. There's two skylights above me when it's not dark out. Um, there's natural light. And uh, I do a lot of my writing here, but I'm also the person that could go and write in a cafe or coffee house while I like it quiet here while I'm writing. The ambient noise doesn't seem to bother me there for some reason. So I'll do that sometimes just to mix it up. Or um, if my cats are being crazy here, um, for those of you who don't have cats, a computer screen is their favorite thing to scratch their chin on. And if it's just getting too much. Sometimes I'll go in my car. I have one of those desks that you fit on your steering wheel and I'll go to a, um, one of the national park here or one of the local nearby parks and just write for a while. It just var it varies depending on how I feel. Okay. Um, Sandra. So you can kind of half see that I am in, in my home office, um, but I actually don't do a lot of writing here. This is more the day job. Um, once in a while I will when I'm supposed to be doing the day job mm -hmm. but most of the actual writing is down in the in the living room in a comfy recliner with a blanket on my lap this time of year um, when my niece showed me these this great noise canceling headset which is like a godsend um, so when my wife is watching a tv show that I have no interest in I can just pop those on put a little ambient music on and write to my heart's content all right cool Dina so when I, excuse me, when I first started writing, way back when my kids were were smaller, I did what Jesse did. I'd write in the car when I was waiting outside to pick up my daughter. That's how I kind of started writing. Now my kids are grown, so I have this office here. Um, I have some nice bay windows right here that I can see out the front yard. Um, other times I write in the living room that has a nice big window to see out in the backyard. Um, it's just kind of wherever I'm. Uh, comfortable at the moment. I don't really write in coffee shops or anything like that because I get distracted by people. Um, and I, I tend to, to stop writing and people watch. 
So uh, it's better to be in a either my backyard or here in the house when I write. Yeah, and Angie. Um, I, I, you know, just like a lot of people said, kind of here or there. Um, I uh, have a little spot. I work from home two days a week and then in the office two days a week. Um, and so sometimes I'll work, you know, write a little at the office. Um, sometimes, I, uh, you know, I, I sit down at my uh, workstation here in the house. I can, I've written in the car. I've gone to coffee shops. It's just kind of wherever you can squeeze the time in. Thankfully, my son is 18 at this point, so he's pretty self-sufficient. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I still will kind of, we have four dogs, so sometimes they're just being too much and I can't take it. So I'll just like, it's it, Panera is, is less chaotic than um, my house at times, so. Um. All right, moving right along, let's talk about, you know, when, what happens when you want to sit, you know, when, when are you ready to sit down and actually start putting the words on the page? You know, is there, is there a moment? Is there just sort of a, okay, I, I want to write a book. I need to sit down and, and do, so sometimes do you have uh, the, like the first line or something, a, a big scene that you want to write or, you know, what brings you to that moment of I'm putting words on page? Um, let's, this Sandra, let's go with you. Sure. So um, like I mentioned, I do plot myself into a stupor most of the time. Um, so I tend to have every chapter, every scene has something done before I will write the first sentence. But there have been some stories where I get kind of bogged down. I mean, I have this vision of where the story is going to go, but it's kind of, it's getting weak in the middle. Um, and it's sometimes at that point, I would say, okay, just get started. Because as you write, or as I write, ideas come up. And as the characters start to speak on those first few pages, you start to realize, okay, she's going to do something different. Or this is this, this idea I had, you know, five chapters from now isn't going to work because obviously what she's coming out as is, is not the same. Um, but it gives me that impetus and that knowledge as I start writing to go and say, okay, now I can go finish the plot if I've gotten stuck because I've felt the characters, learned the characters more after that first few chapter or two okay thank you um elena yeah i'm a plotter and i begin writing when the plotting is done so um at that point i've written scenes in my head um probably multiple times i uh i have like i said everything down in scrivener where i want to go i know how it's going to end and um once i finally sit down at the keyboard that's when the fun begins I like that Okay, Jesse. I'd say I'm a pansy plotter. Um, I I will plot out sort of the major plot beats that I want to have, um, whether it's in the romance arc or uh, you know crime or whatever uh, mystery to solve, whatever the other part is, if there is one. Uh, so I I know where those are, what they are, where they're gonna happen, um, and then I usually I need to have a good sense of the characters. Um, or at least who I think they are until I start writing. And then they sometimes are a little different. Um, and I will plot out pretty detailed first few chapters, maybe three or four to get myself going. And then as I sort of get to the end of the third chapter, the fourth chapter, then I plot out in much more detail the next few and kind of go along that way. Um, I don't plot the, I don't do detailed plots of the entire uh, book before I start it because I end up, things change so much that I think it would annoy me to have spent all that time and then change things. Um, so I, I do plot, but I still have some of my pantsing habits from years ago. Okay. Um, Angie. Um, <clears throat> I used to, I write everything in Scrivener, but I used to start with a word document and I would just basically map out the entire story um in very small chapters that I would have some you know dialogue in there that that uh, would you know because the story is kind of playing out in my head and so I would have some bits of dialogue in there but basically the whole story but um now with my last novel that um, comes out in May um, my wife found this great website called 
plotter, P P L O T T R. Um, and so I use that for my lab and it's a historical fiction. And so there was so many details and, and so much, I really had to plot out and figure out how the hell am I going to do this? And, um, and it was really useful. <clears throat> and so I've, I've kind of started playing with a new novel. Um, and I, I use that. And I mean, it has like character sheets that you can use and, um, um, and then, and you can move stuff around. So I'll kind of plot it out and it's just like one or two lines for each chapter. And then, and then you can, you know, drag them around pretty easily, um, which you can do with Scrivener too, but, um, this, uh, just the visual of it in a timeline like that really, uh, is helpful. And I think it's just plottr.com. I just started using it. It is amazing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dina. Yeah, I just started using Plotter myself. I bought it for myself for Christmas and I love it. Just the way you can have your whole timeline. Um, and what I kind of do is start with a high level with all your beats and everything. And then I build what I want to happen during those beats and that. And um, I did that with Plotter and then I pulled it all and put it into to Scrivener because the tools connect. So it's really nice that you can do that. Um, but once I have all of those little um, headings in there, I'm going to say, that I know what's going to happen, that's kind of when I like I sit down and take a look at, at where I can start to write. But again, I don't write in order. So if I think of a scene, you know, while I'm out somewhere or whatever, I write it down and it goes in. Um, and that's the good thing about Scrivener is, you know, if it doesn't fit where I think it's going to go, I can just slide it to another chapter. Um, so I'm kind of that half plotter, half answer person still. Um, but I'm trying to be more structured. So. Okay, I mean, we sort of touched on it, but I, I wanted to talk about, you know, where you, what do you do when you're in the middle of the book? When you're there, you're you're writing the book. Um, do you do you show pieces to other people? Do you have a daily goal? Um, you know, what what are your tricks and and uh, ideas for finding time to write? Um, you know, around children, around dogs, around jobs, and all that sort of stuff. So, um, uh, Elena, why don't we start with you? Well, I'm fortunate enough to be able to focus on writing. So finding the time is just a matter of me deciding to sit down and do it um, and you know, not be distracted by something else. Um, I am not a morning person. So I usually will, if when I'm actually writing, writing, I'll usually start about midday and then sometimes work late until the night, uh, late into the night. Um, what else? Uh, showing it to people. I, I started out in fan fiction. So I, for those who don't know, um, you usually post a chapter at a time. And so you would think I would be more used to people reading it, um, you know, as I'm writing it, but I don't do that anymore. And, you know, if my girlfriend asks, you know, to see it, I'd, you know, show it to her, but um, I don't usually show it to anyone until the first draft is completed. Um, I'm not sure why, but that's just kind of how it's become. Do you, do you have a writing goal? Do you have a, a number you oh, have? Oh, cool. Um, in as much as there's a deadline and I would like to get it done <laughs> as soon as possible so I can make it better and, you know, start on the self-editing stuff. And um, that's just, I don't really set a daily, you know, word count goal or anything like that. Okay. Um, Sandra, let's come to you. So... I do try to find, um, because I do have the day job, I tend to write either before I start the workday or at the end after dinner, you know, I'll find some time to write. I tend to try to keep to certain word count goals. Um, I have, you know, a set amount that I want to try to do every day, but that kind of really doesn't happen. So I tend to go by week, you know, did I hit my word count? goal um, for the week. And if I haven't, I try to sit down on Saturday and catch up. Um, but that kind of, that kind of tends to be the process that I follow. Okay. Uh, Dina. So as for goals, I kind of throw it kind of where kind of want the draft to be. And I let Scrivener tell me what I need to do. Some days I make it, some days I get I, more than what I need. 
So it kind of fluxes. I do get up at like around five. I'm just a little early riser, so I'm up at five-ish. And I write till about seven when I log into work, unless I go into work and then I stop at six and I have to drive in, get ready and drive in. But um, that's kind of my pattern. By the end of the day, I'm usually a little tired, too tired to write. So I don't really write in the evening any longer. Sometimes I do if I get an idea on the way home, uh, but that's that's really just not a thing for me. I used to write late into the night, but I, I just don't do that anymore. Um, as for showing anybody my my manuscript or chapters, I don't really do that. I will <clears throat> bounce ideas off of my partner, um, possibly show her a scene, talk to her about how she thinks it's gonna work out. Um, she'll give me some feedback and, it, and when I'm done with the draft, generally she reads it. And, and looks at, at how badly I spelled everything and my grammar and all that stuff before I send it in. But okay, that's the only person you. that looks at it. So okay, um Angie. Um I um I'm so sorry my dog is like driving yeah. me crazy. So <laughs> I'm like trying to focus on what the question was. Um uh, do, you have, do you have writing goals? What's your what's your process when you're oh my process right. writing? How do you I find talk to anybody today? else? Um, I am fortunate enough to be married to an author, um, and so I used to kind of harass her about will you read this? Will you read this chapter? Um, and I basically drove her bananas. Um, and so I don't do that anymore right now. Um, but it's she's great about being honest with me and so you know I'll say oh I'm thinking this and you know blah 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 and this is gonna happen and uh I have a problem with conflict like I just want everybody to love each other and kiss and be happy um and she loves the conflict part and so and my editor is like oh yeah you gotta have conflict and so uh, Megan's really good about saying yeah, they can't just fall in love in the second chapter. Like you have to <laughs> have some kind of, you know, you have to build to it. Um, so she's really uh, good about, you know, being honest with me when I bounce ideas off of her or, or you know, she'll just be like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, people, real people wouldn't do that. And so then I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I'd rather have somebody that's uh, going to be honest with me. But it's very helpful because it, it can be like you're writing in a bubble and you're going, I hope this is going to be okay. Yeah. All right. And Jesse. Um, I do have word count goals, generally speaking, and they're always very optimistic. I have, you know, X number of months to get this draft in. I'll be done, you know, at this time so that I can do lots of self-editing. And then usually life gets in the way and then my word per day are determined by how soon I need to turn the thing in. Um, and the more, the closer I get, the more I have to write every day. And that usually makes me insane. And I think I'm never going to do this to myself again. And then the next one comes along and I'm in the same boat. Um, in terms of showing people, I, um, I didn't used to, it used to just be me that I would look at it and then I would send it off. Um, but my last couple I've shown parts of it to uh, another author that I'm friends with. And then now recently I'm part of a writing group and that has been so amazing um, because they are honest about the good and the bad. And when things don't work, you know, I know before it gets to the editing process and I get the bloodbath of track changes back, which I still do, but at least some of the big stuff has been taken care of. Um, I'm probably the, the, you know, odd man, odd woman out here with, uh, my wife does not look at a thing that I write before the um, page proof stage. And then she is the fresh eyes, never laid eyes on it before, has no idea what is coming. And she finds all the typos and things that I've looked at a million times, but I'm too blind now to see because I know what it should say. And so she sees the things that are not actually there or are and should not be. Um, so that's the first time she reads anything that I've written. Okay. I, I want to uh, add in here too um, that I totally should have uh, mentioned also. I have an amazing group of uh, BSB and um, other publisher authors of um, 
like there's four or five of us um in this group and um and it's just our little writing group and so we do sprints writing sprints with each other and we bounce ideas off of each other and it is amazing like i love it we're we are each other's cheerleaders um i I know renee roman is one of them and she's uh in the chat here um aurora ray and jamie clevenger and um lee hayes and nan campbell i think it's campbell's her last name and yeah it's just a, it's just an amazing um i highly recommend other authors um uh you know make a little group like that um because it's it's a nice even if it's just um man i'm struggling i'm struggling to get to get my words in i just need somebody to tell me it's you know i can do it <laughs> it's gonna be okay and yeah, and and that we kind have of, a great community here. Yeah, that kind of leads me to my next question because you've written a book, but you know, uh, what do you do? What's the editing process like for you? Uh, again, do you, do you show the first draft to your writing group? Do you show it to your editor? Do you show it to your wife? Do you show it to you know? And then what happens during the editing process? I think a lot of readers may not be aware of that. Um, Angie, you started a little bit, so talk about you know what the editing editing process is like for you. Um, well, uh, you know, I just got my edits back from my editor yesterday. So basically you, I will write, um, my novel and I will run it through, um, like Grammarly or, um, uh, you know, something like that, a tool like that one time, um, I'm a Texan and, uh, we, we write it like we say it. Um, and so that's uh, a lot of times <laughs> not right. Um, <laughs> so I do what I can, uh, to kind of clean that up as much as possible, send it to my editor, um, Cindy Cressup and, and then I just hold my breath, um, for months, uh, until I get it back and I just please, you know, I mean, I fully expect, um, edits, uh, you know, and, and, um, and you know things that I'll need to fix, but you just really, really hope that that your editor is going to like it. Like it really is like your teacher giving you an A or giving you a D. You know, you're just like, please, please let her uh, at least say you're on the right track, um, or or you did good. We just have some things to fix, or you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, it goes to the editor and my editor only does one round. Some editors do, you know, multiple rounds, you know, you, you fix it and then you send it and then they send it back and it'll go back and forth. My editor only does one round. You send it, she sends it back, you fix those things. And then you send it back to, I send it back to her. And then it goes um, like to be uh, formatted to look like a book. And, you know, and, and, you know, once you kind of get all of that, it happens everything is slow until that point and right. then then it goes fairly quickly um to okay. get it set up and published yeah all right dina what's the editing process like for you so i'll um do all the spell check and everything in word um i do have a couple of macros that will look for words i use a lot different things like that that i run first um then i send it off to shelly who shelly is just awesome at uh uh, making me me look good. She's she's great with changing my uh, sentence structure and teaching me. She taught me so much about how to write um, since I started in this this uh, well, it was a hobby at first, but now in this business. But um, and then she'll she'll take a look at all the grammar and then she'll send that back to me and I'll run through it and and look at this sentence structure and all that and then I send it back to her. And then she comes back with more content. So we do usually two rounds sometimes three if I, I'm not really, <clears throat> haven't gotten my word count that I really need for the end book, um, which has happened sometimes. I just haven't got the, the amount of content I need, but the bones are there. So, but uh, I, I don't think I could do it without an editor. I don't know anybody who, who could really. It's uh, they're really awesome. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't even try without an editor. All right, thank you, Sandra. So in the um, 
when my first draft is done, um, I kind of will let it sit there for a week and then I'll come back to it and I'll do what, what others have said here. I tend to go through the first time and just try to make sure that the continuity is there, that I haven't changed, you know, somebody's brown eyes to blue or, um, you know, pick somebody's age that's completely different and what have you. And that the story is cohesive, you know, anything that I changed later on, I have to make sure it's, you know, fed further in, at the beginning of the story. Um, I also have a set of notes from the editor, from my editor of problems I had before. And I try to go through and say, okay, did I, you know, I'll go through specifically and try to capture, you know, these set of projects, the problems. To, I still don't catch them all, but I catch them um, more of them than I had in the past. Um, my commas are still atrocious. I do get some of them right, but I get a lot of them wrong still. Okay, Elena. I self-edit um, before I send it to my editor, um, who's also Cindy Cressive. And uh, a couple things I do, um, I use Pro Writing Aid, um, depending on how much time I have. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you can put your manuscript through in there and, you know, do I really have that many passive sentences? You know, that kind of thing. But um, I, there's other things I use. I've got a couple good books, my props today. You can read those. And uh, Cindy told me that when she gets it from me initially, she uh, reads it, you know, edit it, edits it, but then sets it aside for like at least a month and just thinks about it before she, you know, goes back to it. And then she rereads it. And um, does more edits, I'm I'm assuming. But um, when I get it back from her, like uh, like Angie said, we have uh, one pass, so that's final chance to you know fix anything you want to fix. And then I send it off. And again, I don't see it until page proofs. Um, and let's see, answer everything. Oh, I I also use for those who don't know, when you become a BSB author, they send you some documents. One of them's a style guide and. There's also some, you know, things we want to see in our books, things we don't want to see in our books. And so for myself, when I self-edit, um, I've gone through and I've kind of slimmed that down and I've added some things, things I know that I tend to do that I need to watch for and um, things in the style guide that I already know I've taken off. So now I just have something concise I can quickly go through and um, do for each manuscript before I turn it in. Okay, Jesse. Um. Well, my self-editing gets uh, shorter and shorter depending on um, how close I am to the deadline. But I do, I tend to self-edit as I go along. So I'll write and whatever I've written the day before or whatever, I go back and reread it and then catch all the stupid stuff. Like I fell asleep in the middle of that sentence and that doesn't make any sense. There's, you know, 12 Z's in a row. Um, and so I, I definitely do a pass that way. And that helps me catch the inconsistencies with the story or something, you know, that I've used the same word now in, in that section 25 times. Um, so that is definitely helpful. Um, my current editor is Cindy as well. Um, I used to work with Vic. And so I feel like when I write, she's on my shoulder telling me, cause we worked together for so long, uh, all the things that she taught me over the years. Um, I feel like she's really set the groundwork well. And I probably am a, a weird one of this group, but I love the editing process. I am skeptical when I get a document back that doesn't have very many changes. And, you know, I'm like, did you really read this? Is this, this can't possibly be all set. And so I, I love getting a manuscript that's just, you know, completely torn apart because I feel like that's an opportunity to learn and get better and make the book better. Um, but I know a lot of people don't feel that way. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. One of the best writing piece, pieces of writing advice I ever got was that Hamlet could have used another draft. Um, we are coming up to the hour, unfortunately. I mean, this has been a great conversation. I wish we could continue it, but I know that there are other people that want to talk about things. So I wanted to do just one final question uh, fairly briefly. What do you surprised you the most? What uh, uh, or did you find most challenging about this whole writing process? And Jesse, we'll come back to you. Um, the thing that now I'm used to, but early on uh, I didn't expect was the sort of arc of uh the emotional arc of writing where you know you start out things are great you're writing 
you get, I get at least like 20% in and I hate everything I've done. I think I need to start over. I go back, I reread it. Then I, there, at some point I have no idea whether it's good or not. And I just, you know, need to finish it. And then I think it's okay. Then I get the edits back. Like the, the roller coaster that comes along, I think with being a writer and having to get over any kind of self-doubt, cause it is a somewhat solitary process, even if you have other people. But I think that that was something I didn't expect, but now I'm used to, so it's okay. Okay. Um, Elena. I think the thing that surprised me the most, it, most when I became, you know, an author is the sense of community and just how much um, BSB authors and non-BSB authors have uh, reached out and helped and been welcoming. And um, Angie, like you, I fell into a writing group um, with some other BSB authors. Um, I know J.C. Morrison's on here, um, Jeannie Levig and Susie Clark, and I don't really even know how it happened. They probably just were like, saw that girl, she needs some help, we better call her. I don't know, but they're great, and they um, provide great insight and how-to, and they have many more books than I have written, so they are a wealth of knowledge, and um, I, too, had Vic as an editor for one book, but a couple of them had her for more, so... I sort of get some of her trickle down knowledge that way too. Um, it's been great. They're they're just wonderful to have. Yeah, I'm um, Sandra. Um, I think to me the the most difficult part is kind of I get into this mid book slump, um, and that's when I know that my own story has weaknesses in it because if I'm not engaged in the writing, a reader's not going to be engaged in the reading. Uh, so I have to kind of reevaluate what I wanted, why it wasn't enticing me to write, so to speak. Um, and how do I pick it up in terms of saying, okay, this is, this is not interesting to me. It's not going to be interesting to a writer. What do I do now? Um, and reevaluate kind of portions of it in the middle. Okay. Uh, Dina. So I wouldn't say it's surprising, or maybe it was when I first started this, but it's just amazing to me at all of the, the inner workings of BSB, everything that goes into producing a book. Um, everybody there does a, such an awesome job in everything that they do just to make sure we get it out and get it perfect. So and I'm very grateful for that because um, I know there are a lot of indie authors out there, but you know maybe they have the time to do it. I don't have the time um, or the knowledge to, to do any of that. So I'm very grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Angie, final words. Um, I you know, agree with everything everyone said, uh, amplify all of that a hundred times. Um, and I think uh, one thing that kind of surprised me um, after writing is I, I I didn't expect to, and it takes a while, uh, my novel will be out for a little bit and then somebody will say something about it or something will remind me. And um, and I, I realized that I kind of miss those characters you know what I mean? Like uh, you're just living in that world for so long and you're kind of friends with these people in a way for so long. And it's like such a part of your life, uh, you know, in, in your brain for so long. And then, you know, it's just, you're done. And then they're tucked away somewhere else. Um, and that's, it's just kind of a weird uh, experience. Yes. All right. We're coming up to the hour, and I know there's another panel going on. So thank you all for a really great panel. Um, I very appreciate your insight, and I hope the uh, audience out there does too. So wave bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.